It's just so good to know that there's something about us that's spontaneously free and okay in every moment. There's something about us that's just intelligent and beneficial, and that's our open intelligence. If we just stop thinking for a moment, what remains when you stop thinking? It's an intelligence, it's an alert, it knows. It's very simple, easy to identify. Easy to identify. And it's, there's a soothing quality about it. Like when you take those short moments, do you recognize that there's an ease and a stability regardless of what you're thinking? Like even if you're trying to understand what I'm talking about or you're experiencing all these different kinds of thoughts, emotions, and sensations, there's something about us at the basis that's completely stable, it's free, it's peaceful. <clears throat> Spontaneously knows what to do to be of benefit. There's not a lot of contrivance involved. It, actually, open intelligence is completely free of contrivance. The here and now, free of contrivance, spontaneously arising and self-releasing. So in short moments, many times, emphasize open intelligence. Rather than how we have been living our entire lives, which has been emphasizing the descriptions within our open intelligence. So the descriptions, the data, all of the thoughts, all the emotions, the sensations, the experiences, the memories. When we emphasize all of those, then we're, it's like being just trapped in a valley of descriptions where we don't see the overview of what's going on, of what's actually needed in each moment. There's no openness. It's just a very limited perspective. So in short moments, we, d we open our intelligence. We see what's operating, what's the operating system, you could say, the overall operating system that doesn't require any paid upgrades. You know, it's always spontaneously upgrading itself. So there's an, an, an openness, a quality of openness, of ease, of, of peace, of potency. And then all the data, they're streaming. The data are like um, just little points in space, all the light points, but they're inseparable from space. Data are inseparable from open intelligence, like a breeze is inseparable from the air, or the color blue is inseparable from the sky. Without open intelligence, there would be no data. Data are synonymous with this open intelligence. So that's not something we've heard since we were born, most of us. We weren't educated that data have no independent nature, that they are the shining forth of this intelligence. So we've been spending our whole lives giving them descriptions of positive, negative, or neutral, and then basing our lives upon it, basing our relationships on this. Um, yeah, just very it's a very limited perspective because then, you know, in terms of a relationship, if we have negative data about someone, we can emphasize it and then you can create quite a story around it where one moment you completely are in love with this person and the next moment you're thinking of how can I divorce this person and find a new partner because they left their dirty socks on the bed again and that's just the last time or that's a silly example, but I'm sure you can think of the examples of why you were in an argument with your loved one lately, and it's usually something quite insignificant. But it's it's amazing to see, like, in your example also, you know, if somebody asks us or it seems like they're telling us what to do, it can bring up so much data, so many different kinds of thoughts and emotions, sensations, and if we react to all of that, then we know what it results in. It's more tension. We feel further from the person. We feel like leaving the group. We create all kinds of stories of why they're wrong and I'm right. 
So a very simple data stream that proliferates into a whole storm of descriptions that basically lead to pain, suffering, war, killing. I mean, if we were to ask why people are at war, you know, there'd be all kinds of reasons and they seem quite insignificant to some and other people they may seem very significant but we'll never be able to be in a harmonious relationship if it's based on trying to come to agreements on data on points of view on belief systems on assumptions so better to just practice short moments of openness We've tried it the other way for so long, why not test out something else? And the invitation in this training is to test out short moments of open intelligence throughout your day when you naturally remember to do so. So if you're feeling tension in a relationship, when the descriptions about why you're feeling tense about the relationship, short moments of letting that description just be as it is. Choose to not go into the story just for a short moment and keep repeating that. Just rest naturally. Data arise and they self-release. No effort needed for them to self-release. The data have no independent nature. They're inseparable from beneficial open intelligence. It's just that we've been giving them some kind of meaning that feels like we need to say something or change the other person, make them know why they were wrong and that we know that doesn't really work in the long run. It may provide temporary relief or temporary satisfaction, but it doesn't bring about this complete harmony and life satisfaction and flourishing that we all want for each other. So very powerful in this community, when we come here, it's a, it's a training ground to let data be as it is. If you notice that things come up for you in this situation, that's perfect. It's it's like a permission field to allow data to arise and self-release and without the invitation to not go into habitual modes of reactivity. It's very obvious when we see those reactions coming up strongly and then we can make a powerful choice and just see how it is to let it be as it is. Maybe you do feel that you're right and the other person is completely wrong but just allow that to be as it is. I choose to not go the old way and rearrange it, fix it. Try to prove that you're right. You know that one, proving that I'm right. Here's the stamp of I'm right. Just let everything be as it is in short moments many times. And what starts to emerge is just a, um, well for one, the data they self-release and we're on to the next story and description. If we're not in there thinking about it all day, they just naturally are, we don't even recognize them anymore. And then we're thinking about lunch or we're thinking about something else. You know, the data, they're so unpredictable, they're just a ceaseless flow. So you see that in not getting in there and indulging the descriptions about why you were made wrong and they need to fix that, there's a natural tendency for harmony and unity. It's just what's innately present. And the descriptions, they settle out after a while, you know, through practice. I was thinking the other day, if you were, uh, I mean, most of us have come here and we usually effort so much to do something with everything. We try really hard, we strive, because that's what people around us are doing, and to let everything be as it is sounds so counterintuitive to everything we've been doing our entire lives. So for me it was actually one of the hardest things to do to let things be as they were. There was just such a tendency to not let everything be as it is. That was my mode of operation. Not letting anything be as it is. It was always to polish it, improve it, change it replace it. So it's quite profound to come here and try that out. Initially, when gaining confidence in open intelligence, the data are reminders to take short moments. 
So if something strong comes up, like an argument, or... Um, yeah, that's a good one. It, it is a powerful reminder to, to continue to rely on short moments. And then if it's difficult, we have the trainings in balance view, which further support relying on the openness of open intelligence. That's what I found really beneficial in the beginning was just coming to open meetings, participating in the trainings, reading from the texts, listening to the free downloads. Uh, well, it's so amazing, there's so much free educational material offered in Balance View that it's, it's always accessible. Just thousands of hours on all topics from many trainers speaking different languages because it's so important that we all have this education in the nature of mind, and we just want it freely available for anyone who wants this. So to know that at any point in your day, if you're having difficulty in a relationship and you don't know how to let data be as it is and find the harmony and peace that we're looking for, you can just go on the website and download a couple of talks on relationships and just listen to the experience of others and hear how relying on open intelligence does harmonize all relationships, including that with ourselves. And then reading from the books, if you like to read, just even reading a paragraph from a book. If we're all wrapped up in our daily descriptions, just reading something very empowering, is it somehow shifts that focus from tunneling into the data to the openness. And we, then we have the trainers who are available to share their experience, to share practical instructions and key points. Yeah. So amazing that there are just people that have dedicated their lives to sharing about education and the nature of mind as a core competency for living life. And then we have a worldwide community of people living from this vantage of open intelligence. That's where, it, for me, it was really exciting and enlivening to see it in many people, not just a few people. I remember the first large gathering I went to in an event in Sweden, and before that I had only met about 10 or 12 people in the community, and I thought, yeah, this is nice. But then I went and met like 200 people in one meeting. I was really amazed and impressed, and it felt like I was just at home with a worldwide community immediately. So warmly welcomed and no contrivance, no posturing to look a certain way or trying to fit in. It was just really easeful and relaxed and people interested in empowerment rather than competition, trying to look really amazing and do amazing things and showing off and all this stuff that I just wasn't interested in. I mean, it's so amazing to see people shine with their inherent gift strengths and talents. So that's another thing I recognize in the community, people just shining, offering what they, what they could. So I think everyone here is just, we're all beautiful, and less and less are we trying to look better than someone. Open intelligence is the best beauty care. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I remember seeing a picture of me before the empowerments and I, I just looked sick. Like, <laughs> it's kind of gray and just, and I just looked, I don't know. And then seeing after the empowerments, just a lightness and a I was like, wow, that's the best beauty product out there. We can make millions of dollars on open intelligence as a beauty product. It, just practically, when we stop emphasizing all the tense data, there's just naturally more openness and relaxation, and things work better, and they shine, the inherent shine of our exalted nature.